the blood falls. No, it's not Halloween. This is a real thing. The mysterious blood falls are spilling their secrets for years. The deep red color at Antarctica's Taylor Glaciers has fascinated researchers. Yeah, and now there's a chemical explanation. I hate to kind of take the mystery out of it. Look but at that's that. what we're going to do here for you. Uh, yeah, look at these great pictures, by look. the way. And we have even more surprises uh, unfolding beneath the surface here. Geologist Dr. Trevor Mace, uh, Nace, excuse me, joins us now from Houston, Texas. Uh, Dr. Nace, thanks for talking to us. So what is the yeah. what is the red color? Let's give it away right now. Yeah, so the, the red color is a similar to uh, in the Grand Canyon. If you've been to the Grand Canyon, you'll notice that a lot of the rocks are dyed a dark red color. And that's because there's iron in those rocks and that iron oxidizes or rusts. And basically it's a similar process in this river. Uh, it picks up a bunch of iron from the bedrock below it. And as it travels down through the glacier, it picks up more and more iron. Once it gets to those uh, blood falls, it oxidizes or rusts and turns a dark red color and stains the, the ice around it. Is this something we've ever seen before in Antarctica or because, I mean, what, this iron's coming from what, like a million years ago or something? Is this the first time we're seeing it? So uh, it's been flowing for a while. It was first discovered in 1911, uh, but it's, this is one of the few ones that are dyed a dark red color. So we see these glacial flows underneath glaciers a lot. As glaciers melt, it's common to see the uh, kind of streams flow out of the, the bedrock of the glacier. But it's fairly unusual that this stream is, is dyed a dark red color. And as you said, it takes about 1.5 million years to travel from the source wow. all the way to blood falls. So it's it's over the, the age of the human civilization. So it's quite a long time to get, so get give, to that source. So the red coming from that long duration of time within the iron, if you will, and then eventually coming on out. I mean, how deep are we going here so, with this? How deep uh, are so the, it's up to about half a kilometer. So the, the Taylor Glacier is about half a kilometer at the source and then gets to about 50 meters deep uh, right at Blood Falls. So for where you see that coming out of Blood Falls, it's about 50 meters. And that kind of just works its way through uh, crevices and cracks through the base of the Taylor Glacier. And it's not just it iron it. that is that far below the surface. What else is down there? Yeah, so interestingly, there are some microbes down there, what are called extremophiles. And those microbes are devoid of any sunlight. They don't have any oxygen, but they still live. They still live on sulfate, basically reducing sulfate. And by doing that, they get energy to make it through that, that 1.5 million year long journey. And that's unusual in that most life forms can exist under those conditions. And that's probably an analogy for how life initially formed on Earth, and then also an analogy for how life could form on another planet. And what, happens when, they, it's, what happens when they step into the light? Hmm. Uh, they probably die at yeah, that they're probably point. Not too happy. Yeah, yeah they, they probably die at that point. Yeah. Uh, they're just not used to those conditions. Just like we wouldn't be used to those conditions either, right? With the pressure and the no exactly oxygen. Not. Dr. Trevor Nace, thank you so thank much you. for joining us. And how poetic that when the glacier melts, it bleeds out like that.